In the 10 years we've been developing in South Lake Union, our vision has really always stayed the same. We've wanted to create this really dynamic community, but it's interesting to note that where we were developing 10 years ago was an entirely different neighborhood than it is today. So 10 years ago there were about 17,000 workers and only 600 residential units. So it was someplace that was a, a very, um, you know, kind of quiet, dormant industrial area that people drove their cars through and didn't come to. So the challenges then had to do with how would we get people to come want to live and work in this neighborhood. Today we're developing in South Lake Union that is the hottest real estate neighborhood in Seattle. It's very vibrant and eclectic and interesting. And so the challenges today have to do with how do we get tenants that want to come and co-locate with other tenants. Um, we need to be very mindful of continuing our vision to create this economic engine, but also keep our goals of sustainability alive. So to keep incorporating um, great transit and public spaces for people to recreate in, bringing in all the kinds of amenities that people want, and creating a neighborhood where people want to come stay and live and play and work. With our development projects in South Lake Union, we've developed about 5 million square feet to date, and it's included everything from retail amenities that go along with office uses or biotech uses, and also quite a lot of residential products. So different tenants certainly have evolved in what they like to see and the amenities they expect in their neighborhood. One of the things that was really important as we moved through our development process in South Lake Union was to keep creating amenities that met the tenant needs as they were evolving. So, for example, office users, 10 years ago, they were using more space per employee. Now they're reducing that space, and we're seeing much more focus on people wanting to have a healthy lifestyle, and that's something that's been um, talked about here at the ULI conference, a lot of things about healthy buildings and healthy communities. And so we've tried to incorporate ways, um, we've tried to incorporate features in our buildings that will meet those needs. So for example, we've got um, bike facilities, storage facilities, and lockers in our buildings because we know that a lot of people are trying to commute to work in different ways, taking their bicycle or walking. Uh, we've also um, incorporated zip cars in our properties and electric charging vehicle stations, which reflect the desire of people to have some um, alternative transit means. Uh, but it's also now, it's not so much about um, building by building development, it's really about the whole neighborhood. So it's figuring out how to create spaces for employees because their spaces in their work area are so much smaller now. The common areas need to be more interesting, really have to have great features, and then the outside areas really need to be um, interesting for employees as well. We've found that a lot of people want to have fresh air, so in our office buildings we're incorporating operable windows so people can get fresh air in. And then if you go outside, you'll see lots of pu public plazas and open spaces, spaces with artwork, to get people out of their offices and have some place to go and sit, and, and the whole community becomes part of their extended workspace. On the residential side, we're seeing some families wanting to move into South Lake Union, so we've started uh, designing buildings with more bedrooms. Uh, certain properties we've incorporated three bedroom units, and we've also uh, started incorporating more and more um, community garden, gardening facilities. So on the tops of these buildings you'll see places, pea patches, where people can grow their own organic vegetables and get outside and really enjoy the amenities of outside and the views um, that they might not have from their individual unit, but they get that experience by going to the common areas. I don't think we would have seen the success in South Lake Union that we've seen without the really great public-private partnership we've had with the city of Seattle. Um, from the beginning, we've had the same goals, and we've worked together at the table together uh, to meet those goals, and that started with wanting to create an economic engine for the region. We wanted to create a neighborhood that had 24-7 amenities that really got people to um, come out and, and have a reason to, to be in the neighborhood at different hours of the day. It needed to be pedestrian and transit friendly, and it also needed to be a sustainable neighborhood. So working with the city, we've um, accomplished a lot of those goals. We've uh, seen about $600 million invested in infrastructure in the neighborhood, which has been really critical because the neighborhood was neglected for so many decades. So now we have new roads, we have a new streetcar line, uh, improved transit overall, 
a wonderful new park right at the edge of South Lake Union, and all of that was created through these public-private partnerships. Um, we've also uh, we're proud to say that that South Lake Union is a uh, lead designated neighborhood plan and so it really speaks to the goals of sustainability in the neighborhood as well and the city was very active in uh, helping to achieve that goal. So I think the most important thing that, that we've really learned is to get those goals settled at the beginning and to keep your focus on those goals as you move through and to be willing to adapt to the changing uh, environment. And like I, I said, the South Lake Union has changed so much in 10 years that we always need to be striving to look at what the neighborhood needs and what the next best thing is for the neighborhood.